Ohio football hopes to pass a whole bunch of mile markers on another drive to Detroit in 2023, but you have to have a status check on your journey first through fall camp, and the Bobcats had that at Peden Stadium on Saturday with Scrimmage One. Hi again, I'm Russ Eisenstein. He is Rob Cornelius, the best darn color analyst in the MAC and one of the best in the country, proving that you didn't have to play the game to know the game and communicate the game. So you know the game, communicate the game, Rob. How'd they look today? Well, I did punt briefly, but look, a couple scrimmages. This is the first one out of the way. Offense is good. And this team on paper, the skill positions, if you had them in the video game, you're really excited where this season's going because they look like they can move the ball pretty easily and score. And you saw great quarterback play out of four, actually five guys wrestling today. Yeah, a lot of depth shown in scrimmage number one. A lot of plays, as Tim Alvin will talk about momentarily. And so you saw all the layers that you're, you're looking for forward to seeing in a fall camp scrimmage um, and it's a balance too right because you want the offense to be good but that means maybe the defense wasn't as good you want to have a little balance of the two and, and I thought Ohio struck that pretty well well good O-line chemistry and it all yeah. starts there I think only one penalty today and a really high play count scrimmage you saw some highlight reel stuff some great throws to receivers some decent runs and you saw some depth again guys in a scrimmage you are going to play down the down to the threes and the fours but you saw good work out of all those groups I, I do think it's fair to say that the offense probably won this scrimmage but the defense did put them in some situations where they had to capitalize and they did and you do a lot of situational stuff you play a lot of like overtime offensive set up short fields and whatnot yeah. but for the offense a little ahead right now but uh, the defense will be fine trust them how about the thoughts of the reigning mac coach of the year tim albin and what he saw from his ball club uh, i thought uh, overall really good day that's beautiful weather very similar to what we're going to see in our first first ball game i uh, went a few more steps than what we normally do i don't know a little maybe close to 90. Uh, got some a lot of young guys in We've got some established players that, that got, I don't know, 2025, uh, and then we played a lot of young kids. Uh, had officials here, you know, everything except a, except a game clock. We had the shot clock going. We never have done that uh, before on a first scrimmage, and then we, I thought we handled it well, really on both sides of the ball. Defensively, had had a chance to do a lot of subbing in practice, how we're practicing. Today was really their first chance, and then they did a good job. They had one penalty, I think. Uh, offense, we caught, we caught them going fast. Uh, but uh, overall, good good day. Uh, we got to work on tackling. Uh, some missed assignments uh, offensively, gave, gave up a couple too many sacks. But uh, all in all, in my years here, good for scrimmage. Our camp coverage is presented by GoMart. So our Tim Albin's thoughts, you could see their outstanding logo in the bottom portion of the screen. Let's talk about some individuals here. Yeah. And we, we talk about the offense. Curtis Rourke looked good. C.J. Harris looked good. Parker Navarro looked good. O'Shawn Allison, Jacoby Jones, the tight ends, a lot of good. Yeah, some faces, some guys back from injury, obviously. And then some new faces. You're going to see some freshmen integrate into this thing. And Tim mentioned a couple of them already, both receiver and running back. There's a lot more skill guys you want to the field this year than you've had in a long time. And there were some option decisions, right? So Ohio was in that that read sort of pattern where the defense had to force their hand. And I thought that's probably where the defense showed their best. Yeah, it really, really did. Covering the, covering the perimeter and not giving up stuff on the run to the quarterback. Really enjoyed seeing Parker Navarro as well yeah. back running the ball some after that big injury at Iowa State last year. Just depth on depth and a spoil of riches. And the depth extends a little further down the line too. Tim Albin's thoughts on maybe some players you'll get to know as we move forward? Uh, offensively, uh, Chase Hendricks, receiver, had, had a good day. Uh, again, we've thrown the, uh, basically the whole playbook at him. we got to keep, keep him coming in that area, but uh, has had a really good 10 days at camp and had a, caught, caught a couple balls today. Uh, I think Ricky Hunt is going to be a guy that's going to push. And uh, um, I'm liking what uh, Dane uh, at center uh, did a good job. Uh, he, we threw him in the fire. He's only been here about a month. And he's making all of our calls right now. Um, so I just that's off the top of my head. Defensively, I think uh, Kobe Gorman uh, had a good day today. Uh, we'll, I got to see on maybe on some uh, assignments, you know, just until I see the. I won't know until I see the film. Uh, I think uh, Kendall Bannister uh, was going to help us in the secondary. Uh, we challenged him a few times today, and he delivered with some 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 uh, some man coverage things. He did a nice job, and uh, I like what I saw uh, from. Uh, Justin Perchette, you know, uh, he had a, uh, a little incident that I got to get cleaned up with his body language, but uh, he showed like why he's a good corner. Depth on depth for sure, wave on wave as we get set to see some waves 
in Southern California coming up in the opener. So what happens now? Well, this is the conclusion of practice number 10. Moving forward into this deal, we'll see if there's a full-on second scrimmage or how Ohio handles it moving forward in another full week. Yeah, still up to discretion. Obviously, they win a ton of plays today, nearly 100. So they really maximize what they got out of it. And again, this season starts in week zero, a week earlier than anyone else yeah. in the world. Kids here a week earlier than most teams in the country. So Ohio on a different schedule to get you to Saturday. 826 in San Diego. Yeah, so if you're you're thinking ahead here, well, it's a week earlier, and so if Ohio is earlier into things than they normally are, then you're several steps ahead as opposed to being steps behind. Put it on the calendar. Also, he can be your travel and life concierge. And I, I say that because we'd love to see you in San Diego or down in Boca or wherever. Plenty think, of opportunities to travel. Yeah, so think about and still we're ahead of time here, so you could still get a good flight, still get a good hotel and all that. Think about making the trip with the Bobcats, because, again, we're going out there early. Join us, won't you? And then get your season tickets to Iowa State here, LIU, and then, you know, those Saturday games should be a lot of fun. Rob, always good to see you. Yeah, more Saturdays than usual. Fewer weeknights might be the best fall schedule in Peden in 20 years. Plan to join us, however it is that you are going to join us. Jordan Bowes always joins us does a great job, and he seems to like working with us, so that's good. He's Rob Cornelius. I'm Russ Eisenstein. We're presented by our friends at GoMart. On the go with Bobcat Football on Bobcat TV.